Hey everyone, Marcus here from the Ashland Fly Shop. Today we're going to be unveiling two new intruder kits that we're having. The first one will be a marabou fly kit that's designed to tie both a two station intruder and a single station intruder. And then the second kit will be the, the same thing but for the ostrich variety. But we're going to start here right now with the marabou version. Um, and I'm just going to hop right in on this 40 millimeter Senyo shank. Um, and I always start at the very back of the fly. Um, these kits will be outfitted with the big fly thread from Hairline, which we've used on a lot of our kits. Um, as you can see here, I always just wrap towards the eye, and I like to. Start at the back, wrap forward, and then put on my lead eye. Um, these will be little brass eyes um, right around 530 seconds for these kits. Um, just a couple wraps in one way, and then you kind of just get a figure eight pattern until everything's secure there. Usually with thread this big and strong, it does not take it very long to get pretty secure. And then just wrap towards the back again. And then we're ready for our trailing wire here. It's just the standard Senyo black, regular thickness. And we're using, we're going to have size two hooks in these kits, just a standard SSW owner hook. Just kind of straighten. I like to actually pinch the wire a little bit. Um, so that it lays, the hook just lays flat, and then you lay everything as, as best you can. You kind of just get it to be both layers on top of the shank. And before you tighten anything down, you want to make sure it's actually going to lay down on the shank that way. And then basically with each wrap, you're just going tighter and tighter. And it's really important from a fishing perspective to have that wire um, fold back at a 180 degree angle and I always try to do it um, with enough room when I'm planning the intruder I want that wire to fold back so that it doubles the bulk of the body but does not bulk up where I'm going to be putting that front station of the fly and I'll show you as we go down why that matters so much and then we're just going to start with a little dubbing loop. The fly I'm tying here will be just a black and blue two station um, marabou intruder. But the way that we're setting up the kit is that you'll be set up to tie a couple different colors. It'll be set up for black and blue, black and purple, and, and pink. So you could do a pink and purple as well. Every time I have a dubbing loop, I really like to, I have this little, just a dowel with some Velcro on it. And I really just like to pick that out. Because this dubbing is so spiny, um, most intruders have some type of prop, but on that back station, with that really spiny dubbing, I'm just going to go straight ahead and put the marabou right on top of it. Um, I think that'll give it a, a nice look. With marabou, I always just clip clip the bottom end. All of that is just, um, that fuzz is just not going to be useful. And then you just peel back the fibers a little bit. Always tie in your marabou towards the tip. Um, I'm really conscious about not trying to put on too much of, of any one material. Um, I really think especially, almost especially with marabou out of everything, um, you want to keep it light. And then just grab it with our hackle plier, give it a couple wraps. So 
We've outfitted it with a couple different colors of guinea, um, orange, pink, purple, and blue. And that'll just allow that highlight, um, sort of those, those accents to the main color of the fly that'll allow you really with this kit um, to tie quite a few varieties. Um, and you'll have the materials for that and then you just as you tie through the hooks and, and beads that are in there, you can kind of just buy more and use, use those materials. And then it kind of just, that, that guinea comes back and lays down on that marabou. And then just kind of tie off that stem. Usually two or three wraps on the stem is, is just fine. And then we're ready to tie in our wire. We're just going to be using um, medium ultra wire and silver. And it's what I've, I've, I actually use it on all my intruders, no matter really the size. It just seems to be the most appropriate. And we'll, right now, we've got this this pink and clear flashaboo and that will be in all of them along with a couple other colors of flashaboo but really for the body this pinkish clear ends up being one of the most sort of versatile because you can use it on the bodies for all of those colors and the way I like to tie in my flashaboo is I like to grab quite a few strands and the thing that that does if you only grab a few um, you're just not covering that body very much. And having multiple strands cover the body when you end up doing your front wraps, it just helps get it uniform. Like even that, you saw how the flash boost split, but as I wrap forward, it's just gonna cover all that up. And so that even though it didn't look you know, pretty in the beginning, at the end of it, it just looks like a, a, a flat sheen, and that's really what you want. And we'll just clip that off. Um, I try to with my flashaboo, always try to just keep that in my hackle plier and then use it for later. Because I'm broke as fuck. And then we'll just wrap. I don't do much counter wrapping. We'll just wrap this wire straight consistent with that same angle. And the reason why having that wire, the intruder wire, not affecting the front station of the fly, the reason why that's good is because as I do my rear prop right here, you see how this is bulkier, but that bulk isn't built up, so my rear prop can sit right at the end of that bulk, um, which is a lot better in my opinion than having it um, sort of on top of there. And with the front station, I do the same marabou as in the back, but I don't, as you saw with the back loop, um, sort of comes out spiny. The front, front station, I always like to just have a, a ball of material. I don't, I really don't like, you know, spiny dubbing at the top because this is actually going to have um, an Arctic Fox prop. And we're doing it with, um, just black arctic fox because it goes well with with all those colors this is the patch of arctic fox here and it's really big and the main thing and and i'm guilty of it but it's like marabou you just want to really be conscious about not putting on too much like it, it's very easy to look at this and get get all excited about having a big arctic fox prop but it really only takes you know about an inch worth and I think about it, you know, an inch to two inches in length and an inch long. And that is a perfect prop without getting too bulky. And we'll just sort of fit it in our dubbing loop here. And then just start twisting. I like to pull it usually at an angle away from the fly. Um, 
just so that it's not grabbing all that marabou. And then again, I like to brush anything that's a prop, I like to brush it out. And we'll wrap, start wrapping back towards that dubbing ball because you really want this to sit directly on top of that dubbing ball. So the first wrap pushes a lot of that Arctic Fox forward. The second wrap, you want to pull all that back and you see how it just sticks straight out when you do that. And that is what helps create that, really that intruder effect. Um, And the front station has always, it's always seemed to me that to have that really considerable prop is, is always more important on the front station than the back station. But um, that's just my personal. Clip away the fuzz, pull back a little bit, and really same thing, you're only, only working with um, just about an inch worth of, of marabou. Um, and it gives the fly really marabou when you when you put so much of it on the fly. It really actually hinders the amount of movement because it's just so much material in a lot of cases. Plus being getting waterlogged and being difficult to cast. Lost my thread. So we got that marabou in there. Usually I have two pairs of hackle pliers. And then we'll just grab the end of it and just wrap it directly onto, onto that Arctic Fox. And it's only about one full wrap of marabou, which as you can see by the way that it splays out there, that's all you'd ever need. Um, it's the easiest thing to do in tying to overdress a fly. And the more you avoid it, the better off you are. And then we have another section of guinea here that we will put as a collar again just working with about an inch worth of material, tying in at the tip, making sure we get it nice and wrapped and locked down. And then just getting really, just looking for about one really clean wrap of guinea. And the reason why we use guinea um, as opposed to anything else that we could use up there is because it's, it's one of the, the stiffer fibers out there for, for what it is, so it helps keep that shape of the intruder. And then all I'm going to do is just lock those eyes in again tie down some of the loose ends of that guinea, and then I'm done. I like a few wraps right in front of the, the brass eye, and then I whip finish all my flies. Um, I do two knots with four wraps. It's, I don't know why I chose that, but that's what I do, and it seems to not come undone very much. So there's the first marabou fly, and it's just a double station. This one's black and blue. Um, I'm going to switch over and go into the single station fly that we have on deck for this kit, too. Um, and I will do it in purple, just so you can see what that's going to look like. Vamos a ver. 
adelante sin ver qué dirá si yo pudiera algún día remontarme a las estrellas conmigo te llevaría a donde nadie nos viera no hagas caso de la gente sigue la corriente Si esto es escandaloso, es más vergonzoso no saber amar.